I just did just now. I just went live. <laughs> oh yeah. Stunning graphics and frame rates. <laughs> it's a chat Sunset. window. <laughs> I'm refreshing my agent, it's taking a while. Is it really? Alright, can uh can people in chat hear me? It's like it's three D. It's an incredible sight. Um so can people hear me? Uh rookie, turbidity. And also, uh, Polar, are you able to hear me not in TeamSpeak, but in, like, uh, the yeah, channel? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you are. All right. Cool. The chat box is pretty dark. Oh, that's true. Actually, I don't need to make it, uh, I don't need to make it transparent. It just struck me. Totally forgot. There we go. That's kind of bright. <laughs> Shit. There is no winning arm. How about that? Is that better? Eh, it's it's still pretty dark. A little, little bit brighter. Yeah. How's that? Zyron's here. Zyron, get ready for something cool, man. Well, maybe get ready for something different anyway. I think that looks good. Okay, cool. All right. So here we go. So the way this works is, I'm actually going to pop this up on. I'm going to pop this up there. Wow, look at the tremendous graphics. Okay, so the way this works, guys, is this is a complete experiment. I'm not going to do this all the time, but I just thought I'd give it a shot because it's it's late and uh, I figure better no, no better time than the present. So this is going to, basically what we're going to do here is, this is going to be, uh, there are these old series. Uh, does anyone on the channel, anyone ever play um, at read any of the fighting fantasy game books like, um, when they were younger, like... Um, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, or Death Trap Dungeon, or anything like that. Basically, like, or if you ever did a Choose Your Own Adventure book, that would be another example. Um, well, uh, I play those on my iPod. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm talking about. So, and tell you something is uh, Final, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Final Fight, whatever. The books were fight. all on the App Store. But then they got all taken down. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Another one also is um, some people did a Lone Wolf um, series too. That was another one. Uh, they came out like, they started coming out in like the 80s, but they've been constantly like re-released and redone and stuff like that uh, over the years. And like he said, it's shown up on them as well. Fitz can't hear me. Can everyone else hear me not on TeamSpeak, but like on the channel? One sec. Okay, Zyron can hear me. I don't know. I have a bunch of apps called Gamebook Adventures. They're pretty much the same thing. Oh, yeah, totally. Some pretty cool people. But when Final Fantasy Flight was on sale, I don't know what to call it, so I'm just calling it FF, but uh, I bought one called Death Trap Dungeon. Yeah, yeah, of course, Death Trap Dungeon is tremendous. They had all of them up. I wish I would have grabbed them all when they were on sale, but yeah, yeah. Now they're gone forever. Yeah, they may be. Some of these may be different, like, but they, you may have encountered them in different sources. Anyway, so um, the best of these series that were ever done of this set, in my opinion, is by a guy named Steve Jackson, who is one of the founders of Games Workshop. And you guys know Games Workshop as the guys, there's the folks who do uh, Warhammer, the forty thousand K and Warhammer, whatever. That's Games Workshop now. But it used to be that War that Games Workshop did a bunch of games um, back in the day, Talisman and Blood Bowl, and a bunch of other ones. That was all uh, Games Workshop. So. What the guy, the co-founder of it, Steve Jackson, wrote this series of four books called uh, Sorcery. And um, basically what it was was an adventure that you would go through, um, sort of like, you know, basically an RPG, let's say, but it was an RPG based on this sort of book model um, that you would have. And uh, let's see. And so what I decided I would, I would try to do, and it may be a complete failure, in which case, you know, 
it was a complete failure, but that's why we're doing it late at night. Um, uh, it may be a complete failure, but I thought I would try to do like a little viewer control deal where I would read through parts of these. Basically, I'll read through uh, and make you guys all will collectively be the character. And I'll read through it. Um, and then uh, you'll have an opportunity to basically play through the game. And the only thing we'll have to do is um, people will have to choose one person. I can't do webcam now, Fitz. I, I don't want to. I don't want to set it up. I'll do it at some point. I'll do the webcam, but I can't do it right now. So you're gonna have to deal with my voice for the moment. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah. So the only thing is that um, one of you will need to uh, be the official like die roller, like randomizer in those cases where like dice come up. Um, so yeah, and I'll basically play the monsters when you encounter them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's what we'll do. We'll play for a little bit. Your voice is way more than I need. Yeah. Um, so we'll try, we'll try this for like, you know, 20 minutes, half hour. And if people absolutely loathe and hate it, then I won't do it again, but I figure it's worth trying. Do you trying. have dice? Uh, no, nah, but I have a, di yeah, I do actually, but not up in on my office right now, but I have a die roller that I can use. Uh, I was like, I could go grab some real dice if you want. That's, hey man, that's fine. You could definitely do that. You already love it. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we, we go. D sixes, D twenties. You will need a. That's a good question. Let me check. I think two D sixes. Yeah, two D sixes, or you know, one D six, whatever. Anyone have a preferable color? I got blue, red, green, purple. All right, purple. chat. Your first big decision. We have a vote for purple. Red, green. It's up to you guys. You're not going to see them, but just in your mind. Think of the <laughs> this is all theater of the mind. Yeah, I'll be back. I'm actually going to grab them. <laughs> Fits turquoise. Okay, can everybody hear now, by the way? Uh, ter can Turbidity and Fitz, you guys can both hear now? Okay, Fitz can hear. Turbidity, you can too. Okay, cool. He, we're, I was just joking. He's just voting on the color of the dice that Knight's going to use. Not that you're going to see it, but... Okay, so the first book is called... This is in the series Steve Jackson's Sorcery. And the first book is called The Shamutanti Hills. And in fact, let me even uh, see if I can pop up a um, link. Because I bet there's a link somewhere. Let me see. Ah, oh, yeah. There is. All right, here we go. Here's the front cover. All right, I got them. Yep. Manticore is right. Okay, I just put up a uh, night. I just put up in the... Um, in the window, uh, the um, picture that's on the front cover of the book. So yeah, so periodically you guys will um, go through battles. I'll explain it when we get there, but basically the way that works is that um, you will um, periodically get into fights. Um, and basically the way to work this out, and actually this is a good time to do it, you'll get a chance to use your dice roll right, right now. Um, you have a few things that you have to get. So let's, let's set up your character. Um, and then someone is going to have to keep track of this so I can remember it um, later on. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, blah, 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 blah. Are you guys going to... Right. Are you guys going to play a wizard or a warrior? A wizard has better combat strength, but a warrior has... A I mean, sorry. A warrior has better combat strength, but a wizard has access to spells. So what's the vote? Wizard, wizard... Warrior. I decided I'm not a voter. I'm just a dice roller. You're just a dice roller? Okay. Hi, Flamed. Everyone in chat's going to explain what we're doing. <laughs> um, so we got Wizard, Wizard, Warrior. Any other votes? Oh, Warrior. <laughs> Flame doesn't even know what we're doing. Warrior. Okay. So two Warrior, two Wizard. Tie. Two to two. Wiz. Three to two. Four to two. I think that's going to win it. I think you, Wizard's going to win. You can ignore one of my votes. Oh, you just voted twice. <laughs> Wait, you just voted one for each. What the hell? <laughs> that's that's gonna confuse me, dude. <laughs> okay, I 
I vote wizard. You vote wizard. Okay. So I think uh, one, two, three, four, okay. So I think wizard's gonna win. Rookie, what's your vote? Wizard or warrior? Warrior. Oh, warrior. Wait. Wait. Warrior. Wait. Wizard. Okay. Wizard. All right. Wizard it is. All right. So uh, here we go. So knight, roll one die and add four to it. Whoa. No one told me there would be math. No, I'm kidding. It's seven. Okay. So type in, somebody type in, please. Skill equals seven. Wait, what? Somebody type in chat, skill equals seven. Okay, cool. Um, now, uh, stamina is next. Uh, roll both dice, if you would please, knight, and add 12 to it. Eighteen. Eighteen. Stamina equals 18, chat. Thank you, sir. And now luck. Roll one die and add six to it, please. Ten. Ten. Okay, cool. Those are pretty decent rolls. So the deal is, um, uh, so the deal with this is that uh, those are your initial scores. So you can never go above um, skill, stamina, or luck. You can never go above those except on very rare occasions. So most of the time, that number that you're looking at, those numbers are going to be what your guy has for the entirety of the game. Um, okay. Uh, skill, seven, stamina, 18, luck, 10. Okay. And then the last thing to remember is, um, you guys have, hold on a second. Okay, let me see. Polar, you're, can you turn your, your mic down a little bit? Oh yeah, sorry. That's okay. Okay. Now, the last thing to type in the chat, or the last two things are, your provisions. Um, you start with enough provisions for two meals, and you can only rest and eat when allowed by the instructions, and you may only eat one meal at a time. When you eat a meal, you add points to your stamina as instructed, but remember, you can never go above your initial stamina. So, provisions two. Somebody could put that in. Thank you. And uh, the last thing is a name. So we need to figure out a name. So does chat want to throw out a couple of possible names? Something appropriate for public consumption, please. <laughs> What's the name of your wizard? The Rookie. Shockingly, Rookie chooses The Rookie. Sir Wiggles. <laughs> Ocelot. Like Revolver Ocelot fits. Bond, Polar Bond, Nathaniel. Okay, so we've got Nathaniel, we've got Pol we've got Polar Bond, we've got Ocelot and Sir Wiggles. And should I really count the rookie? <laughs> I'll count the rookie. I think we should name him something wizardy like... Ice, Fire, Blaze, Melter. <laughs> okay, so you have this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so there are your choices. So you guys can vote. So vote, um, vote for your favorite: uh, the rookie, Sir Wiglas, Ocelot, Polar Bond, Nathaniel, or Ice Fire, Blaze Melter, or Turbidity's options: Scourge Hat, the Imposing. Can I add one more in? Not if you've already put one in. No, you may not. <laughs> nope. Nope. Denied. All right. Let's vote, chat. What's the name going to be? You see the options. The rookie will vote for Yeah, please don't vote just for your own choice. <laughs> Shaney, go ahead and put in... You can uh, You can vote for one of the names. Oh, you like want to make the, a name? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean thing. Everyone votes for themselves to be the Pirate King. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> that is a concern, I suppose. Um, well, I tell you what. Do it this way. Vote. You know what? Do, the, do it this way. Do it this way. No, okay. That's I am vetoing McBooger. Um, the two options are... So you vote for your top two choices. Yours plus one other. Okay, so vote for your vote for you can vote for your own if you want, and then one other I person. I see what you did there. See, vote for yours plus one other. So you get two choices. This is good that I have two accounts. <laughs> Except for Polar, who has two accounts. 
I'm just kidding. I'm not even going to vote. All right, what's it going to be, chat? Each person gets to vote for two. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Sensing a pattern. I guess I'll also vote mine plus Ice Fire Blaze Melter. Wait, yours was Ice Fire Blaze Melter. Well, <laughs> you can't. I said you can't vote for your own twice. I was just following the crowd. Don't blame. It looks to you like it looks to me like Ice Fire Blaze Melter is going to be it. Okay. So Ice Fire Blaze Melter wins. All right, that's your name. I hope you like the sound of it. Okay, here we go. Now, the last thing I want to tell you guys about is this. Um, you oh, 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 wait, I'm sorry. There was one other thing to put in chat. I'm sorry. Um, you have a sword as your weapon, a backpack to hold your equipment, and you have a pouch around your waist containing 20 gold pieces. So I forgot about that. You have 20 gold pieces. So if someone could just type in 20 gold, that'd be good. Thanks, Paul. Do it in, uh, if you could do it in chat too, please. Thank you. Thank you for both. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Here we go. Now, the last thing to keep in mind is that during your adventure, you're watched over by your own goddess, Libra, who is the goddess of justice. If the going gets tough, you may call on her for aid, but she will only help you once in each adventure. Once you've called on her help in the Shamutanti Hills, she will not listen to you again until you reach the City of Traps, which is Kare. That's the second book. So there's three ways in which she may help you, okay? Three ways. One, you can call on her at any time to restore your skills, stamina, and luck scores to their initial values. So you can do that at any time. Adventure is this first book that we're doing, Rookie. So you can call on her at any time to restore those scores to their initial values. You can only do that once, as I said. Secondly, there will be occasionally times where you're in danger and I'll give you the option of calling on Libra to help you and then you can use her to basically escape, but you can't do that if you've already used her to, re to restore your scores. And then finally, she will remove any curses or diseases you may pick up on your adventure, but again, if you do that once, then you can't use her for the other options. Okay, so restoring um, skill, stamina, and luck to their initial values, uh, removal of curses and diseases, or escape. You can do that once per adventure, all right? So if you're, going, if you're in a tough spot, you guys can be like, hey, wait, maybe we should call on Libra, all right? That's a cool name. Yeah, Libra. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. <clears throat> the Legend of the Crown of Kings. Centuries ago, in the time we now call the Dark Ages, whole regions of the world were undiscovered. There were pockets of civilization, each with their own races and cultures. One such region was Kakabad, a dark land at the end of the earth. Although several warlords had tried, Kakabad had never been ruled. All manner of evil creatures forced from the more civilized lands beyond the Zanzunu peaks had gradually crawled into Kakabad, which became known as the Vermin Pit at Earth End. Civilization and order had spread throughout the rest of the known world ever since the discovery of the Crown of Kings by Shalana the Reformer of Femfrey. With its help, Shalana became emperor of the largest empire in the Eastern world. This magical crown had mysterious powers bestowing supernormal qualities of leadership and justice on its owner. But Shalana's own ambitions were not of conquest. He wished instead to establish peaceful nation-states aligned to Femfrey. Thus in his wisdom he passed the fabled crown from ruler to ruler in the neighboring kingdoms, and with the help of its magical powers one by one these lands became peaceful and prosperous. The path was set. Each ruler would own the crown of kings for a four-year period in which to establish order within his kingdom and fall in with the growing Femfrey alliance. So far, the kingdoms of Ruddlestone, Lendelind, Galantaria, and Bryce had taken their turns under the rule of the crown. The benefits were immediate. War and strife were virtually unknown. The king of Annaland duly received the crown of kings amid great ceremony, and from that day onwards the development of Annaland was ensured. No one quite knew how the crown of kings could have such an enormous uplifting effect on a whole nation. Some said it was divinely inspired, some that its power was merely in the mind. But one thing was certain, its effects were unquestionable. All was well in Annaland until the night of the black moon. The king was the first to discover that the crown was missing. Carried off on that starless night by birdmen from Zaman, the crown was on its way to Mampang in the outlaw territories of Kakabad. 
news came from the Badlands that the crown was being carried to the archmage of Mampang, whose ambitions were to make Kakabad his kingdom. Although Kakabad was a dangerous land, it was in itself little threat to the surrounding kingdoms. The lack of rule meant it had no army, and its own internal struggles kept it permanently preoccupied. But with the crown of kings to establish rule, Kakabad could potentially be a deadly enemy to all members of the Femfrey Alliance. Such was the shame that fell on Annaland for the loss of the crown that all benefits from two years under its rule soon disappeared. Law, order, and morale were breaking down. The king was losing the confidence of his subjects. Neighboring territories were looking suspiciously across their borders. There were even whisperings of invasions. One hope remained. Someone, for a military voice, force would never survive the journey, must travel to Mampang and rescue the crown of kings. Only on its safe return would the dreadful curse be lifted from Annaland. You have volunteered yourself for this quest, and your mission is clear. You must cross Kakabad to the Mampang Fortress and find the crown. This is your quest, Ice Fire Blaze Melter. <laughs> All right, so you guys ready to get back the crown of kings, or to try? If you dare. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> you awake at sunrise. After dressing, you breakfast on bread and goat's milk and collect your belongings. Outside, the outpost settlement is stirring. The women folk emerge to wash and prepare their meals as the day's guard takes over. Eyes follow you as you leave your hut and walk towards the Shamutanti wall. Yeah, T-minus, feel free to post some fantasy images if you like. The Frontiers people are well aware of your mission, and a small crowd of well-wishers follow some distance behind you. Before you stands the Cantapani Gate. Guarded constantly by Sightmaster warriors chosen for their powers of telescopic vision, the gate is the final doorway between Annaland and Kakabad. Once more, you check your pack. Satisfied that your preparations are complete. Thanks, Eternal Fire. Everyone in chat will explain what's going on. You nod to the Sightmaster Sergeant. For the last time, he glances at the lookout atop the gate, who signals the all-clear. The sergeant orders the bolt to be withdrawn. A doorway opens up in front of you, and you get your first view of the Shamutanti foothills, the first stage of your journey. The sightmaster sergeant strides over and grasps your hand. I will not wish you a safe journey, for the way ahead will not be safe. Kakabad is a treacherous land inhabited by devils, but this you already know. Take the path ahead to Kantapani, a small settlement of traders, although most are rogues and thieves, which you should reach within the hour. From Kantapani onwards there are three routes through Biratani to Kare, a city port in the Jabaji River. From Kare you must cross the backlands which are unknown. It is said that day and night in the backlands are controlled not by the sun but by supernatural forces, and bear in mind also that from Kare onwards your progress will be watched. His warnings do little to inspire confidence in you. He continues, But I have observed your training, and you are indeed a worthy champion. I wish you luck and success with your quest. My thoughts and the good wishes of all the peoples of Annaland will be with you. With Libra on your side, may you live to lift the curse and depression which rack our kingdom. You shake his hand, thank him for his good wishes, and step up to the gate. Resolutely you pass through the doorway. The faces of the folk watching your departure reveal the hopes that rest with you and with the success of your quest. With a wave, you turn and face the hills. The early morning air is crisp and the rising sun paints the hills in colors of natural beauty which conceal the devilry ahead. Setting off determinedly, you follow the path. Your quest has begun. Okay, <clears throat> right. The path winds through fields of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted, and an eerie silence is broken only by the cawing of an occasional crow. The birds appear to pause in the air to examine you as they pass, and you feel uneasy in their presence. You pass over a small hillock, of course you can post epic music, Polar, um, from the top of which you can see the path continuing downwards into a small settlement of huts at the base of the Shamutanti Hills. You follow the path, and as you approach the village, noises and movements indicate that it is populated. As the path runs straight through the village, you have little choice but to follow it. The round huts are made of a hard-baked bright clay with thatched roofs. As you pass, eyes appear at dark doorways watching your movements. Suddenly a villager appears from one of the dwellings and stands before you. He is five feet tall with thick-set arms and thighs half-clothed in tattered breeches. His eyes are wild and his long red hair and beard stand out on his face in a wiry tangle. Halt, stranger, he commands. What business have you in Cantapani? What's your response, chat? 
Are you going to tell him you're a traitor, ask for directions onward, or tell him you are hungry and need provisions? Sorry about that mic stuff. That's okay. Yeah, so Copy and pasting. No problem. So tell him you were a traitor, ask for directions, on traitor as in T-R-A-D-E-R, ask for directions onward, or tell him you're hungry and need provisions. What do we got? I think we're starving homeless. We got hungry, hungry, hungry. Uh, hungry. <laughs> Provisions. Okay. Sounds like we got hunger. All right. 198. He motions on ahead, telling you that you will find the village inn shortly on the right. By choosing this option, you will now discover one of the rules of the game, which you will otherwise only discover by trial and error. The adventure is divided into days, and each day you will need to eat one meal, otherwise you will lose stamina points due to undernourishment. Options will be given either to eat provisions from your pack or to buy food at local inns during the day. If you go for a day without food, you will suffer. When night comes, you will be given the option to sleep or continue through the night. Likewise, if you miss a night's sleep, you will also lose stamina points as you will be tired the next day, although taking a night's rest will usually replenish your stamina. But you will have to choose your times to eat and sleep carefully, as sometimes a seemingly safe place to rest and eat may hold hidden dangers. Okay, you walk on ahead as the villager indicated. The inn offers hot meals for sale, and if you wish to stop and eat, the charge will be one gold piece. Bread and goat's cheese are also available if you wish to buy food to take with you, and the price of two meals worth is two gold pieces. So, do you wish to sit down and eat? Do you wish to buy provisions? Um, and so basically, you can sit down and eat, and you can buy provisions one way or the other. So you can get two meals worth of provisions here regardless. So first of all, do you guys want to buy two more provisions or no? I forgot if we even have money or not. You do. You have 20 gold right now, and you've got two provisions. Yeah, buy provisions. And so are we fed the first day, or do we have to eat today? You haven't eaten so far. All right. I vote we eat and buy two provisions. Okay, so it looks like Chad agrees with you. So can someone mark down that you now have four provisions and 18 gold pieces? So that's what you got now? Thank you, Polar and TeamSpeak. And can someone do that in, in Twitch chat also? Gold 18, four provisions. Okay, cool. Now, uh, so Knight's vote is to sit down and eat. So do you guys want to sit down and eat or do you want to continue without eating? means you'll have the provisions regardless, but are you sitting down and eating as well or not? Okay, I got one yes, one no. What time of day? Uh, I think it's about lunchtime, I believe. I think it really depends if there's a bar there. If we can listen to music. Not clear as of yet. I have, a ye I have two yeses to eating, one no. No eating. Okay, so two yeses, two noes. <laughs> That's kind of close, I guess, T-Mod. <laughs> That's funny. Three yeses. Wow, this is really close. Three yeses, three noes. Actually, wait. Knight said yes. So, four, oh my god, four to four. It's like evenly split. Four people say, yes, you should eat. No, who's going to break it? Let's eat. Shit is going downhill from here. Okay, turbidity. It's five to four. Is five to four eating. Okay, so eating is going to win out barely. Wow. That was really cool. All right. Let's check it out. The food is poisoned. You die instantly. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. The meal is warm and nourishing. Add two stamina points. Now, you guys actually don't... Ha you can't go above your initial level. Um, so that's not going to, you won't be able to get the two stamina points, but you've now officially eaten, which is good. Don't forget to pay the price of the meal. So deduct one more gold piece. So you're down to 17 gold pieces and then you can go on. I think Arp should have a little paper and write all this stuff down. Yeah. The problem is if I do that, then I get confused about what I'm doing when I'm also reading at the same time. Cause I'm trying to keep track of what the uh, book is telling me to do. That's why. I got an team speak. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Here we go. You continue along the path, leading the village behind. About half an hour later, you reach the start of the climb into the hills and continue upwards. Five minutes later, you reach a fork, offering you two ways onwards. You ponder the two trails. As you consider the paths onward, you hear weak cries from a large tree ahead of you. 
Cautiously, you step up to see an old man sitting on the lowest branch, apparently afraid to jump down to the ground, which, considering his age, is not surprising you. He pleads with you to assist, and you help him down. It transpires that he has been traveling from Dumpus and is the outpost settlement in Aniland. His journeys had been safe enough until he was waylaid by elvins, robbed and left in the tree. In return for your kindness, he relates a rhyme which he feels may help you. Here's the rhyme. See him, though he sees you not, the black-eyed creature creeps. A guardian once, but now his lot, the key to freedom, keeps. So again, that's, see him, though he see you not, the black-eyed creature creeps. A guardian once, but now his lot, the key to freedom, keeps. He's not sure exactly what the rhyme signifies, but he knows that the elvins are particularly keen on finding the key in question. He also presses on you his only possession, a page from a spell book. Let me take a look at what the spell book is. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I have to find out what the heck the spell was that he just gave you. Okay, um, the spell described is incomplete. You have only part of it. But looking at it, it appears to be some sort of pest-repelling spell. Okay? He then bids you farewell and heads off towards Cantapani. All right, now you may choose your way onwards, chat. Manu, uh, hey, good to see you, man. Uh, everyone in chat will explain what's going on. You may now choose your way onwards. Will you take the highway up into the hills, the low way along the valley, or you may investigate a buzzing coming from around the tree? So highway, low way, or investigate the buzzing from around the tree. Low way. Which yeah. is the road least traveled? Uh, it's not clear. It looks like they've uh, both have been traveled about the same. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them about the same. <laughs> so highway, or low, so we have, let's see, one vote. For, so we have two, one vote for highway, one for low way, two for buzzing, uh, three for buzzing. Highway is in, like, the road is up into the hills, highway. High space way, rookie. Not like high traffic, slow paced through <laughs> yeah. LA. Turbidity, let's get up in that valley. All right. So we've got, um, so we've got one. So let me see. So we've got one, two for high, one, two for low, and three for buzzing. I think buzzing is going to win, barely. All right, let's see. Let's see what the buzzing is. As you look up, you can see a beehive around which a small swarm of bees are buzzing. You may climb up the tree to investigate or ignore it and continue onwards. You're going to climb up to check out the beehive or you're going to ignore it? Okay, I've got uh, one, two, three, four climb. Man, this is going to get so tough. Five climb, one ignore. That's what I like about it. It's hilarious. You guys are like, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, so five climb and one ignore. Cowspan, that is not an option, Cowspan. That's not an option. Oh, man. Okay, so five climb. All right, it looks like climb is going to win. Here we go. We might as well just start throwing rocks at it. <laughs> oh, man. The, the bees swarm around you, but you are powerless to defend yourself as you must use your hands to grip the tree. Okay, knight, throw one die. Three. Okay, that's the number of stamina points you lose as the bees sting you. So you lose three stamina points. Definitely didn't see that one coming. <laughs> so someone deduct three from your stamina points, please. And then, when you reach the hive, you knock it down to the ground. Now, the good news is, cutting open the hive on the ground, you may take with you the wax and the honey. The honey will provide you with enough nourishment for one meal, so you get an additional provision. So your provisions are now five. So you got food. That's good. And wax. <laughs> and wax. Uh, Manu, it what we're doing is we're basically like reading through, so Manu, we're reading through this adventure book, um, that I have, and basically Chad is making decisions right now, um, so it'll sort of, so everyone else can explain more as we go through, but that's the basic idea. Okay. All right, here we go. So, 
You may continue... Well, no, don't forget, Rookie. It replenishes stamina, but also... Um, that's true. You might get another chance to eat, but you have to eat a meal a day anyway. So, All right, so now do you guys want to go up into the valley? Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. I'm Rephrase. Down into the valley or the high path up into the hills? So basically valley or hills? <laughs> Turbidity. Let's see if we can find some crocodile sounds to investigate. That kind of sound, this kind of sounds like Lord of the Rings going up into like the snow pass or That's... going to the gold mine. And we know how that worked. You guys are amazing. You guys keep exactly splitting. Valley, hills, valley, hills. Okay, here we go. Valley, 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 valley. Oh, up or down, that valley sounds great. Okay, it looks like the valley is winning. Valley, 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 valley. Six valleys, three hills. Going once, going twice. All right, the valley it is. Okay. Here we go into the valley. The path winds along a bubbling stream and you follow it onwards along the west bank. The valley you are in becomes narrower, but you soon come across a flat grassy bank where you may stop and eat provisions. So you could eat provisions if you want and that might help your stamina. Do you guys want to eat provisions or no? No. It's up to you. We're only down three. How much <laughs> yeah, uh, I know, stamina Fitz. does it give back? Uh, that is basically... Um, so if it's your first meal, which it won't be, you add two stamina. So you would get a stamina point back. So you could eat and get a stamina point. So it'll use up a provision, but you'll get a stamina point back. Your guy's call. Only one? Yeah, only one, because you've already eaten once. I say wait. So wait. Okay, no eating. All right, looks like no is going to win. All right, on we go. All righty. You continue along the path for several hours, taking you deeper into the valley. Presently, the sun begins to set, the air becomes cooler, and you start to consider whether to find a suitable site to camp for the night or whether to continue onwards without sleep. So camp or uh, camp or go on without sleep? I say camp. Okay. I say no sleep. Camp, camp, camp. No sleep, no sleep, no sleep. Three for camp, three for no camp. Four camp. Going once, going twice. All right, camp it is. You find a suitable shelter in the rocks on the bank of the stream and bed down for the night. If you have not eaten since you left the outpost settlement, you may take some provisions. Uh, okay, so you can eat a provision here again. If You can eat a provision if you want to get a stamina point. That's up to you guys. Oh, man, we're sleeping now. That means we have to eat again soon. Well, the next day. It's up to you guys. Yeah. This is just if you want to get your one stamina back. You don't have to eat. Okay. Hey, what's up, Lego and Akanku? Uh, everyone will explain what's going on. <laughs> All right. Um, no, it says if you haven't eaten, uh, but you can also eat if you wish, but you get less stamina from a trividity. Okay. Eventually, you drift off to sleep, soothed by the babbling of the stream. A short while later, you are awakened by a splashing noise. Looking out from your shelter, you see a strange sight. Three small, thin, man-like creatures glowing with a dull red luminescence are throwing stones into the stream. Every so often they chirp with glee as a good shot sends a, flish, eh, sends a fish flying into the air. As if pulled by a magical force, each fish floats across the water and lands at their feet. Will you sit tight and hope they don't see you, or stand up and hail them? Let's talk to them. They seem nice. Alright, we have a vote for talk. Now I'm starting to regret that we didn't go on. <laughs> okay, so I have two votes for for Hale, one vote for Lalo. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four for Talk, two for Lalo, or one for Lalo. Actually, is it like a dark, menacing red, or is it like a lighter? Yeah, I wouldn't. They don't look dull and menacing. I wouldn't say, but that doesn't mean anything necessarily. Four Talk, two Lalo. Anyone else? Talk. Five talk, two lay low. I have to say, the worst part about this is that it's not Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I know, man, but you know. You can't just like make stuff up that are super awesome. I know, I know, I know. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, so, talk it is. Looks like talk is going to win. As they see you, they all point and gabble excitedly to one another. One of them rises into the air and flies across, hovering over you to take a closer look. Will you attempt to speak with him, or will you hold your ground and prepare to take defensive action? Speak with him. Okay, we've got speak or defensive action. Speaks. 
two speak, three speak. Wolf pup, hey, what's up, man? They'll explain it to you. Four speak, 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 speak. I got five speaks. Going once and twice. Yeah, speak. All right. Here we go. The creature jumps in the <laughs> turbidity. The creature jumps in the air as you greet him and cautiously comes closer. Seeing that you mean no harm, he invites you to join with his companions. Will you join them or say that you would rather stay where you are and rest? Join. Join them. To join. Anyone else? Incoming acid trip. <laughs> Three join. Four join. Five join. You guys definitely want to hang out with these guys. Did I mention that they all have sharp teeth? No, I'm just, I just made that up. Uh, all right. <laughs> turbidity. I love, I like how everything you guys are doing, Turbidity's like, no, they're all going to, oh, oh, God, no. <laughs> all right, here we go. The creatures are elvins, mysterious little half-humans. They live in a village not far up the river, and they are fond of impish pranks. Every so often they will disappear, and as you search around nervously, reappear suddenly in front of you just to make you jump. They are able to turn their glow on and off at will, and another favorite trick is to extinguish their glow and drop down in front of you. More often than not, this means you trip over them, causing considerable merriment to all but you. Nevertheless, you keep your temper. You do appear to be hindering their progress, and after an hour or so, they tire of you and vanish into the woods along the riverside. You wait in vain for them to reappear and eventually decide to find another suitable shelter for the night to get some sleep. You awake again at sunrise and continue along the path. Consider yourselves lucky, because if you guys had ignored them, uh, they would have stolen all your food. So, good call. Well done, guys. <laughs> They, they just wanted to have some fun. That's it. That's all it's <laughs> about. All right. Um, so, uh, have you eaten since leaving the outpost settlement yesterday? Yes, you have. You continue on your way, and you approach a rope bridge strung precariously between two boulders. You may either continue along the path on your side of the water, or you may cross the river on the bridge and follow a path running over a small hill. So keep on the path or cross the bridge. What does the path on the bridge lead to? Uh, a path that runs over a small hill. Hmm. Take the bridge. Yeah. Bridge. Live life to the fullest, even if it means falling. <laughs> yeah, you guys all saw. Uh, wasn't paying attention, rookie. Well, then you're going to be sucked along the. Well, no. Right now we have uh, four bridge, and one path. So basically, rookie, are you taking a rope bridge across the river, or are you staying on the path? So far, we have five bridge and one path. There you go, there you go. That's not bad, T-minus. <laughs> Democracy will pull me through, rookie. <laughs> hey, Benny Hill, what's up, man? Bridge, all right. Yeah, Benny Hill, everyone will explain what's going on as we go through. Okay, so it looks like bridge is it. Okay, we cross the river on the bridge. The path winds up and over the hill, and you stop and marvel at a grassy verge in which are growing some of the most beautiful and delicate flowers you have ever seen. You follow the path carefully downwards, trying to avoid breaking branches as you go. If you wish to stop along the way, do you wish to stop along the way to eat provisions, or would you rather press on? What time of day is it? Uh, so we're er, basically morning right now. So stop, so eat or press, press on. on? Press on. Okay, we got uh, one, two, three, four press-ons. You have to eat at some point, Rookie, but it doesn't have to be right now. But you do have to eat at some point. We should probably get rid of that goat cheese soon. It's going to go bad. <laughs> Five press-on, two eats. Man, cheese never goes by in. Especially goat cheese. All right, looks like press-on is going to win. All right. You press-on. You continue... I cheese out for a day. <laughs> to miser. You continue along the trail, and the undergrowth around you gets thicker. Suddenly, there is a cracking beneath your feet, and something gives way underfoot. Now, uh, this is a, a mechanic we haven't gotten to yet, but at times there's a thing in your game where you can test your luck. And what testing your luck basically means is that Knight is going to roll two dice. If the number is equal to or less than your luck score, then it means that you're lucky. And if it's above the luck score, then it means that you're unlucky. Either way, though, when you test your luck, your luck score drops by one. Now, you can get that luck score restored, but every time you test your luck, it drops by one. 
So you have to kind of balance those off. And you don't know what is you're being lucky about or not. You just have to, you know, kind of base it on what I just told you. So there's a cracking beneath your feet. Something gives way underfoot. Do you want to test your luck or not? Yeah, the benefits are if you're lucky, a good thing will happen. And the maximum yeah. roll would be 12. And your luck score, what's your luck score? It's 10, right? 10. Okay, so yeah. So your luck score is 10, and you'd have to roll the 10 or less on two dice. Let's test the luck. All right, let's see what we got. We've got, uh, I've got one no. I've got one test, two test, three test, four test, five test. Looks like test the luck is going to win, I think. Six. Six yes, two no. 